Hey guys, welcome to the Killian Family Homestead and welcome to the weekend. It's not the weekend, it's Monday, but I've been so sick the past five days that I need to do this video today. Um, and because I've been sick, I haven't been doing, doing any, paying any attention to the water whatsoever, or to the aquaponics. And I've just been feeding the fish, going back inside, going to bed. So, um, something's happened over the past five days. It's not all sunshine and rainbows when you're doing aquaculture, aquaponics. Sometimes there's issues that pop up. This system has been running for three years and it's been very, is it three or two? Two, two and a half, something like that. But anyways, and it's been very low maintenance, minimal fish loss, excellent growth, lots of fun, no issues. This is, this is the second time though that this has happened to me, once for a different reason, this time for an unknown reason that I think I know what it is. What has happened? What's happened is the pH has plummeted plummeted all the way down to 4.4 and uh, that was yesterday's reading. Today, I don't know what the reading is, we need to, need to check that out, but there's a problem. Plants like lower pH, fish don't like lo a lower pH, they like higher pH and so you got to maintain a decent pH for both of them. That's the struggle of aquaponics. I like to keep it typically in the 6.5 to 7.2 range for the fish the plants don't do excellent that way, but they don't, they, don't, they don't die, they don't have issues there, okay? It's dropped all the way to 4.4. I've got to remedy it, I've got to fix it, I've got to figure it out what it is. I think what my issue is, is that I have some potatoes in here that have disintegrated. I have three varieties of sweet potatoes in it. The yams did horrible, the yam itself stayed intact, they shot roots excellent and fast, but the shoot would come out and then the excess of water, being constantly in water, the plant would start to wilt and exude water out and die off. So I got rid of all, number one. The second was a, a local um, um, grocery store sweet potato, a light colored sweet potato, and it is fantastic. The leaf growth is awesome. The plant, ma the, the root matter is quick. It does not disintegrate. It loves being hydrophilic, Hi it loves water. The, sec the third um, sweet potato is a sweet potato, lighter color, but produces a deeper green red, uh, um, leaf, a deeper green leaf. And so uh, it's a different one, I know that. And it's doing pretty well, but I'm seeing a certain percentage of them start to disintegrate because of the excessive water. And because of that, I think they're leaching, leaching something into the water constantly that's not killing the fish at all. It's not an issue there but it is lowering the pH too fast. So I'm gonna fix that today. Now, it's crazy to talk about it being an issue because look how dadgum awesome these plants are doing. I love it. That's exactly what I was looking for. This is the jungle initiative, jungle objective of aquaponics. But the problem is what I would think, let's just do it together. I haven't searched these out. We're gonna to try to find a rotten one. You see these ones, lighter sweet potatoes, doing fantastic. There are three varieties of sweet potato in here. One was a yam, and the yam um, shoots would come out, and then it was so much water concentration, the yam itself would not rot, but the leaves would fall apart and start, start oozing liquid. So we promptly got all of those out of the system, okay, except for their shoots. Some of the shoots are still in here, but most of them have died off. The next wave of sweet potatoes I got, I wish that I could remember the name of them, but I bought them at the local grocery store, maybe I'll, not, not like a Walmart or anything. Maybe I will be able to ask them and they'll tell me. They're the ones that produce these lighter colors that the leaves are going really strong. Look at this one, for instance. This is one of the very first ones I put in here. And as an experiment, all I did was put a leaf in. Just a leaf, that's all it was. Let's pull this out and see what's happened. This leaf is still doing fantastic trying to pull it out. Look at this! That's so awesome! One leaf caked in, feet in, in the byproduct of the fish is still doing awesome. I just love that. I wish I could remember what type of sweet potato this is. But again, not a yam. It's a sweet potato. It's going to be tough putting that back in with one hand, so I'm going to give it a little break over here. Alright guys, tuck the rest of these in here so I don't hurt anything. All right. But the third breed of potato I put in here is doing is doing beautifully. Deep, dark, beautiful leaves. Doing an excellent job. 
but they are breaking down and starting to rot. That's why I've been pulling these shoots off as fast as I can to eventually get all the potatoes out. And then put the shoots in there so they can create their own root ball system. See that? A lot of people do these, these starts for their garden. I just took it to a different level, I guess you could say. But what I think has happened is there are some potatoes that are rotting and leaking into, leaching some sort of an after byproduct into the water and it's crashing the pH. That is what's happening here. So, my job over the next two weeks or so is to get all of these potatoes out of here and have them transplanted into just the, the, the root or the starts. This one has got a little bit of rotting going on. I'm going to pluck all these shoots off and stick the, the things out, throw the potato away. A good indicator that the potatoes are struggling or they're rotting is that they have less growth coming out of them in comparison to their brothers and sisters that were put in at the same time. So this is an easy fix. Just take these shoots off, stick them back in, throw the potato away. All is well. I have a little trash can over here. This is four inch PVC, large holes drilled into it, steady water flowing from this side all the way across and emptying on the other side. At all, it is a constant nutrient flow system. A lot of nitrates being pulled out of the system, though. That's a great thing. I need to make sure that I'm growing, putting some of these outside to grow new tubers so I can perpetuate the stock. Um, or, or maybe I just buy them from the grocery store every year. I don't know. I like sustainability. Got one. Found it. Look at this one right here, one little shoot off, the rest of it rotting. That's not good for the system. This has all happened maybe in the last five days. I got sick, haven't been paying attention other than just throwing the food in. Like I've been telling you, low maintenance, and sure enough this happened. This potato is not, not uh, breaking down at all, but it's just not shooting, so we're done with that. I can spare it. Some of these cups I put more than one potato in. Ooh, I found another one. Yep, 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 yep. So, I'm gonna go completely rotting on this side. This side had decent growth, but you know, it's just not, it's just looking I'm going to put that back in the cup. Take some of these two, might as well. Stick them in the water. Throw the tuber away. You get the picture. I'm going to do that across the rest of this. You don't need to watch that. We'll touch base in a minute. Okay, I just realized after filming it, uh, there was a uh, first part of the video that I did. The, the stupid microphone ended up clicking, clicking, clicking. I don't know if anybody else owns these microphones that you plug into your iPhone. I hate them because every once in a while they just start clicking like an echo sound. 
and um, you ruin a whole video because of it. For all I know, it could be doing it right now, I don't know. But this was the first indicator I had that the pH was a problem or the system was crashing. It's one reason why you have sub tanks or bio moving bed biofilters. Look at oh, my K1 and K3 biomedia completely white again. That tells you that the beneficial bacteria have been wiped out. Such a bummer deal. All right, guys. Um, six potatoes total. None of them an absolute quagmire of a mess in terms of just slush, right? Uh, most of them it was just a, a portion of it that was kind of getting soggy. Um, I, I, after assessment, I don't really know if the pH drop is purely associated with the plant matter breaking down. Um, I, I'm not a scientist, I don't know if that would be the case, but what I do know is, is that the pH has come down quite significantly in comparison to you know, every 30 day or 25 day water change. Um, you know, for some reason I have it falling in 13 days. So I gotta address that, probably a fish load. How many fish are in this system? Of varying sizes, there's about 820 of them. I thought I'd take a minute and actually explain how I do a water change. It's very simple. I open up that bottom valve, it freely flows out. I backfill it with the hose. It fills this, maintaining a steady height because the water that's going into it is actually proportionate to the water that is coming out. This water gets pumped out through this manifold and into this these systems and this whole side of the system here. So I know that water that I'm directly hosing into it is going to be pushed through the whole system and it's going to push bad water out. Bad water, I'm sorry, uh, the, the older aged water that has a low pH out here, boom, and then out of the system back. A lot of moving, a lot of water moving every which way. You can probably, all you guys keen minds out there that have built systems probably think to yourself there's 900 better ways to do it. That's true. I just simply adapted as I built it. I didn't have a major blueprint and then and then built it from there. So, so I'm just going to let this flow a lot of water out. If I wanted to empty these two totes, I can do that by this common line right here. But I don't do that very often. I'm just going to let this run slowly ease the fish into higher pH water and it should work out just fine. Let's take a look and see what the pH is directly out of the tap. Or not tap, sorry, directly out of the irrigation water. All right, what I'm gonna do is fill this up with uh, irrigation water, put my probe in there and tell you what the pH is gonna be. I like to uh, swirl it around for about two minutes. I'm not gonna have you sit here the whole time. All right, it's been two minutes. 7.85 is what it was a second ago. Now it's 7.83, just because it was outside of the water. 7.85, that's what comes out of the tap. Let me show you what the system is right now. I keep saying tap like an idiot. This is irrigation water, straight out of the hose, not the tap. Now this water has already been affected by the new water coming in, especially because it's coming out right, right out of that pipe right there. So it's probably going to be higher than it was just a, a moment ago. 6.8 to 7.2 is what I prefer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this around just like I did the other one. Alright, so it's been two minutes now into this tote. The problem is, like I told you, it's been affected by the higher pH new water coming in already, um, and it's coming out of that hose right there. 5.82, it was at four flat, effectively, just, uh, just a little while ago. So it's raising quickly. Let's go over here and do the same thing. This this right here hasn't been affected as much by the by the new water. Four point seven, four point eight. Way too low. 
way too low. All right, so I'm gonna let this thing run. I'm gonna flush the system as best I can. Then we're going to touch base again and you're gonna see the new re reading maybe later this evening. I just had an idea and I need you to type in a comment if you agree with me or not. If you don't agree with me, let me know. If you do agree with me, let me know too because this might make something uh, change about what I move go do going forward. A day and a half ago, two days ago, I came out here and I realized that somebody, probably myself, had bumped this, which opened up the return line to be moving aggressively. You see how much direct water disturbance there is on all of the K1 media? Could it be that I've created a tumble clean cycle that has knocked all the beneficial bacteria aggressively off of um, those moving bed bio media pieces that then stopped working and could not convert the nitrites to nitrates, etc. And that and then, and then the ammonia spiked and that caused the pH to lower. Could that be it? Let me know what you think. All right, as you can see, I've been out with the bees for a while and this thing has been refilling for a long time. Let's go ahead and do together what the pH is now, okay? Let's read it. This has worked pretty well so far. This video is getting kind of long compared to most videos I do, so thanks for watching if you made it this far. Again, it was reading four flat. It's not good. Water coming out of the tap. <laughs> Gosh dang it. Water coming out of the irrigation canal. What did I say? It's been so long, I can't remember. 7.8? 7.5? Something, something like that. You saw it just two seconds ago. Look at where it's reading now. Can you see it? It's only been in here for a few seconds and it's already reading 6.6. .6. So like I said, 6.8 to 7.2 is my preferred range. To be at 6.6 .6 already is awesome. So mission accomplished. Really, it's awesome, thanks. All right, next day, I know this video is going on and on and on forever, but here is the next day, and I wanted to do, not a live shot, because this isn't YouTube Live. That used to make sense until YouTube came out with YouTube Live. But I'm gonna do it for the first time with you. I have not done this. Let's take a look at the pH. Now after it's completely settled out. Um, let's see here. Ooh, ah! Ah, they keep, they keep biting the probe. Hungry girls. I'm sure you can see that. 7.4, 7.3. Move it around a little bit. We'll see if we're pleasantly surprised or disappointed. Usually moving it around like this will cause it to go down as, it, as the probe is reading it or settle down to what it really is, not go down. 7.07, 7.05, starting to slow down its descent, so we might have found it. Seven point zero three, from four point flat, four point oh, to seven point oh. Nice, that's exactly where I need it. Super pleased with that. Let's take a look at the water temperature. 76.8 degrees, man, yes. Okay, success. What's interesting is some of the plants uh, from, you know, right here, you see that this kind of slumping over. Some of the plants from yesterday's work have actually kind of negatively um, reacted to the water change. I'm trying to find you an example. Yeah, let's take a look at this leaf right here. This leaf right here, that's happened literally overnight. So it's the delicate balance between plants needing a lower pH and, uh, and, and fish needing a higher pH. Look at what happened to my glasses. Whammo. That's called falling asleep while working and... Alright, see you later. Bye-bye.